The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you one of the 50 million Americans covered by Social Security? If so, have you any clear idea of your rights and benefits under Social Security? Well, there may be a pleasant surprise in store for you. For in a few minutes, you will learn from our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, how easy it is to build Social Security into full security. Tonight's FBI file, The Friendly Hitchhiker. One of the outstanding characteristics of the average American is a natural friendliness toward the stranger. Now, this is an admirable trait. And certainly, in general, it is one to be preserved and encouraged. But unfortunately, there are a great many persons at large who make criminal capital of friendliness. And there are many occasions, such as in tonight's case from the files of your FBI, when it is wise to avoid the stranger altogether. <laughs> Already the prairie growth was beginning to take on the first tints of a Texas panhandle sunset. And as the young man in the sailor suit trudging along the highway with his battered suitcase, it looked as if night would catch him still some 50 miles from his goal, Amarillo. Unless this car that's coming down the highway stops. All right, Bum, you stop. Hey, sailor? Yes, sir. Then get aboard, son. Gee, thanks. I was afraid you were going to plow right on by. I didn't notice your uniform until I was right on you. Oh, uh, some people stop for it, some don't. I guess you can't blame anybody for not wanting to take a chance on a hitchhiker. How far are you coming from, sailor? Oh, I just got my discharge in California the other day. In the hospital out there. Yeah, I guess that means you earned one of those campaign ribbons the hard way. Huh? Wasn't as hard for me as it was for some of the other fellas, though. Where are you bound? Amarillo. Well, so am I. No kidding. Is that home? Yes, sir. My uncle has a place outside of town. He's a retired rancher. I see. Well, now that you're out of the Navy, what are you going to do? Well, I gotta go to work. Say, uh, you haven't got a job for me, have you? <laughs> I'm afraid a young fellow with your experiences wouldn't find my kind of business very exciting. Well, what kind of business are you in, sir? I pick up stocks of jewelry that small retail stores get stuck with and sell it at auction at my shop in Los Angeles. Oh, oh I see. I'm picking up some stuff in Amarillo this evening. Uh-huh. Oh, by the way, uh, what's a good hotel in Amarillo? Well, uh, two or three good ones. Oh, but look, mister, you don't have to spend your money on a hotel. What do you mean? Well, you've been nice to me, giving me a lift. I know my uncle would be more than glad to have you. Why don't you stay with us till you get ready to go back? Well, no, I, I wouldn't want to impose. Oh, you don't impose on people in Texas by staying with them, mister. You'll make them very happy. <laughs> and, and besides, you'll get some real old cowhand cooking and lots of fresh air that's swell for sleeping. How about it? So, swell. <laughs> Some 300 miles back west, and shortly before the hitchhiker was picked up, 
Special Agents Allen and Burnett of the FBI's Los Angeles office, engaged in a manhunt, landed at the Albuquerque airport in response to a police report. After a brief conference at police headquarters, they procured a car and drove at once to a tourist camp west of the city for a talk with the owner. Well, gentlemen, that picture sure looks like the young fellow that stopped here last night, all right. Only he was wearing a sailor suit with a lot of ribbon. What kind of a car was he driving, sir? Uh, it was a black Chevy sedan, California license. Uh, do you remember the license number? Um, no, sir. About how old was it? Well, I'd say it was the same as my brother's got, a 42. Oh, that checks, Burnett. Uh-huh. What name did he register under? Um, Jack Smith. Uh, here it is on the register right over here. There it is. Jack Smith. Mm-hmm. Burnett, where's that yeah. sample of Jack Newton's handwriting? Uh, here you are. Mm-hmm. I'd say it was the same writing, Alan. Yes. May we borrow this page for a few days, sir? We'll return it to you. Why, sure you can. Uh, his real name is Newton, huh? Well, the man we're looking for used the name of Jack Newton. He jumped his parole in Los Angeles two days ago. Got a sailor uniform, some ribbons, rented a car, and took out with it. Well... We put out a general police alert as soon as the car was reported missing, but we were just a little too late with it to nail him here. Well, what time did he leave, sir? Well, he didn't pull in till around daylight, slept till about noon, and then took off. And that gives him about a six-hour start on us. That's well, right. if he kept on east on this highway, he could have made Amarillo by now. May I use your phone, sir? Why, certainly. Help yourself. Well, what's our move, Alan? We'll notify Amarillo to spread a 300-mile alarm, then head for there ourselves. <laughs> This way, Mr. Ogden. Oh, very well. This will be your room right here, sir. Well, thank you. I still feel that this is sort of an imposition. Oh. I wish you'd stop saying that, Mr. Ogden. You're going to make my uncle real sore, right, Unc? He certainly will. You were nice enough to give my nephew a ride here. The least I can do is try to repay you for that kind. Well, I certainly appreciate it. Any particular time you want to be getting up in the morning? Yes, pretty early. I have to be in town by 9 o'clock. Well, we'll see that you're up on time, Mr. Ogden. Sure. That's no problem here. <laughs> Thank you. Well, good night, sir. Good night. Good night, Mr. Ogden. Good night. Now, Jack, suppose you give me the tally on all this. Where do we get out of range? Okay. Now, what's the story? Well... I landed out of L.A. three days ago. Yeah? This morning, the hot car I was driving got too hot and caught fire, so I had to hoof it. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a few miles down the road, see, when this Ogden guy gives me a lift. That's fine, but why did you bring him here? I'm not running any tourist camp. Let me give you the whole rundown, will you? Well? I pumped the guy on the way in. Found that he's a jewelry auctioneer in Los Angeles. A legitimate businessman? That's right. Now, look, son. Running a hideout for you cross-country boys in trouble and taking in legits at the same time is dangerous business. I don't want to get... Let me finish, will you? This guy's going into Amarillo in the morning to pick up a load of jewelry. Then he's coming back here again. Get it? Oh. If we can't figure out some way to split that jewelry between us, we ought to give up. Now, do you see why I brought him here? Yeah, yeah. Does it uh, still bother you? Bother me? (laughs) Son, how can you say such a thing? Well, I've never entertained a more welcome guest. Well, we've knocked off 240 miles of it, Alan. Yeah, that leaves about 50 more to Amarillo. I hope there's good news waiting for us. Well, not much chance this soon. We didn't contact Amarillo from the tourist camp in time for them to head off Newton before he got there. Yeah, but they spread out a 300-mile alarm north, east, and south of there. Yeah, I know. Slow down, Burnett. Huh? What for? There's a car off the road there, up ahead. Oh, yeah. And no taillight, either. Oh. Maybe we better have a look. You don't think we're going to find Newton parked out here? Burnett, look. That car's been on fire. Yeah. Come on, let's take a look at it. All right. Looks 
pretty well burned out, too. Yeah. Ted, you got your flash? Yeah, right here. Hey, look at that license. That's Newton's car, all right. And there's no one in it. This will make Newton a little harder to find. Well, he's still probably wearing the sailor suit, and certainly he still has the same face, hair, eyes, and build. And if he's on foot now, that could slow him down a lot. I hope so. He might even be somewhere around Amarillo right now. Well, let's take a quick look around here and then drive in there and find out. What are you digging that hole huh? for, Rock? Looking for oil? Son, I told you to stay in the house and keep a lookout for Ogden. He's not back from town yet. What's with the digging? Well, to tell you the truth, this is something special for him. What do you mean? Well, we can't take his jewelry and let him go, can we? What? Well, that'd be all right for you, because you're pulling out. But I'm not going anywhere. I'm staked out right here, and he could have the law on me in no time. Yeah, but if you bump him Look, off... Who'd ever think he was buried in the hole down back old man Fillmore's corral? I'm a respectable citizen in these parts, son. Yeah, sure, but just the same... Hold on. Listen. There's Ogden now. Just pulled into the drive. Come on. Let's get back to the house. That you, Mr. Ogden? Uh, yes. Uh, Jack and I is down to look after the stock a little. Oh? Have to treat him like babies, you know. <laughs> yes, I'll bet you do. And come on up to the house. Very well. Did you get your business in town taken care of all right? Yes, all done. You mean you got that suitcase full of jewels? <laughs> well, not quite full. Kind of dangerous traveling with them, I think. But I reckon you packed a gun with you. Yes, but thank goodness I've never had to use it yet. Now, go in, sir. Go in. Thank you. And go ahead, Jack. Thanks. Well, I can you might as well set your jewels down right here in the kitchen, Mr. Ogden. I beg your pardon? Look, it's me that ought to be begging your pardon instead of you begging mine. But I guess we won't make any ceremony about it. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Well, now, maybe this will be more convincing. All right, son. Take his gun off him and any identifying papers that might be in his pocket. Yeah, sure. I'll take a look in this suitcase. Hey, must be a fortune in jewels in here. No kidding. Find his gun? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Let's look at all this stuff. Unc. Huh? You slugged Ogden with that blackjack. Yeah? If the cops found Ogden's gun in his hand, they might figure he shot you just before he passed out, right? I suppose they would if that was the case, but... What do you mean, sir? I mean, this way I get all the jewels in Ogden's car, too. No, wait a minute. You can't do it. You know what? Maybe there would have been room for both of you in that hole. <laughs> We will return in just a moment to tonight's case, which shows how your FBI helps provide national security. Now, let's listen in on a conversation about social security between a high-salaried executive and his friend, the Equitable Society representative. Well, frankly, Milton, I've never given much thought to Social Security. I suppose it's a good thing for the man who earns $40, $50 a week, but when you get a lot more than that, it's pretty much small potatoes, isn't it? I don't know, Paul. Is $8,000 small potatoes to you? Of course not. But what's $8,000 got to do with Social Security? Look, Paul, when you get to be 65... It will cost you $8,000 at today's rates to buy an annuity that would give you the same retirement income you'll get under Social Security. And $8,000 is a lot of money. Well, I'll say it is. When you put it that way, Milton, Social Security is an asset to any man, whether he makes $50 a week or $500. Yes, many Americans don't realize what a wonderful asset they have in Social Security. They have never discovered how easy it is to build social security into full security through life insurance. Well, that's a job that we representatives of the Equitable Society are always glad to undertake. For instance, 
If you already own some life insurance, your Equitable Society representative may be able to show you how only a few dollars extra per month will give your family complete protection and assure you a comfortable retirement income through the Equitable Extended Income Plan. Remember, your Social Security benefits vary according to your age, salary, and family situation. So why not get the facts and find out exactly what you are entitled to under Social Security? The government has prepared a special card that will help you secure this information. To obtain one of these cards, get in touch with your Equitable Society representative or send your name and address on a postcard to the Equitable Society care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, -E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, the friendly hitchhiker. There are hundreds of honest persons in and out of uniform hitchhiking along the highways of America today. But the safest policy for any motorist is this. No matter when or where you see a hitchhiker's thumb, keep right on going. It may cost you no more than time to stop, but in thousands of cases, it has cost a lot more. Special Agents Allen and Burnett of the FBI had arrived at the Amarillo Police Headquarters when a telephone call came in from the Fillmore place just out of town. Since the message involved the man they were trailing, Allen and Burnett were given complete charge. And a few minutes later... All right, Mr. Ogden, let's have the rest of the story, sir. Well, when, when I came to, I, I was lying on the floor there. Not more than three feet from his body, and I, I had the pistol in my hand. This is your pistol, Mr. Ogden? Yes, but... I, but I swear I didn't shoot him. Well, if you were being threatened with a blackjack, you would have been justified in defending yourself. But there wasn't time. It, it all happened so quickly. Mr. Ogden, just how were you lying on the floor when you came to, sir? Well, I was... Will you show us, if you don't mind, sir? Well, of course I don't. Thank you. I was, uh, I was just about like this. Half on your right side like that? Yes. And when you came to, sir, where was the pistol? I was holding it in this... In my... Why, well, that proves I couldn't have shot him. The pistol was in my left hand. Where is your shoulder holster placed? Well, oh, here, you, you can see for yourself, right here, under my left arm. I'm right-handed. If I had shot Fillmore, the gun would have been in my right hand. Well, Mr. Ogden, we're not trying to pin a murder on you, sir. In your case, it wouldn't have been murder anyway. We're merely trying to establish evidence that will help fasten the guilt on the real murderer. It's pretty obvious what actually happened. Yes, you see, after Fillmore struck you down, Jack Newton took your gun, shot Fillmore put the gun in your hand, took all the jewels for himself, and escaped in your car. But in his hurry, he made the mistake of putting the gun in your left hand. I'm awfully glad he did. Now, Burnett, will you get on the phone and start telling the police about the body? Yeah, yeah right. Before you're through, I'll have Mr. Ogden's full description of his car. Okay. Operator. Operator, get in the Amarillo Police Headquarters. And Burnett, have the police broadcast a description of Newton and the car, then set up roadblocks as quick as possible in every direction. Hello, headquarters? Uh, Mr. Ogden... You'll give me a full description of your car. No, it's just black. Okay. There you are. Thanks. You like something with that? Uh-uh. You jelly donut? I don't want nothing. Okay. Which way you traveling? Why? Making conversation. Heading east. Oh. Well, the reason I asked was if you're going to be on the road tonight, you'd better look out. For what? 
for what I heard on the radio. What are you talking about? It was an FBI broadcast. What? They said everybody should be on the lookout for this man that just murdered somebody in Amarillo. They say what he looked like? Uh Uh-huh. They said he was about 25 years old and had brown hair and kind of greenish eyes and might be wearing a suit. What do I owe you? Well, well, you only had coffee. Yeah. Well, well, wait a minute. You get some change. Keep it. Probably scared him. Tell him about that. Wait a minute. Brown hair, green eyes, sailor. Oh. Hey, operator, operator. Well, Burnett, the police have got roadblocks set up a radius of 300 miles around there. Good. How's your map coming? Well, I've got just about every roadside gas station, lunch stand, and tourist camp in the entire area staked out with these pins. Oh, good work. Uh, are they going to repeat the broadcast? Every half hour till we make a strike. And then all we've got to do is sit right here at the phone they've assigned us and wait. Oh, uh, let's see. Well, it's been a half hour now since the third broadcast. We ought to be hearing it. I got my fingers crossed, Alan. Hello? Yes. Yes, we'll put her on, please. Well, who is it? Operator, Las Vegas, New Mexico. New Mexico? Newton must be doubling back towards California. Hello? Hello? Yes? Oh, miss? Miss, please talk a little louder and try not to be so excited. All right, boys. He's all filled and ready to go. So get your trucker rolling out of here for that long haul now. Okay. <laughs> so long, Clem. <laughs> Hello. Howdy. I uh, had a little trouble with my car. Broke down about two miles back. I'm afraid I can't be much help to you. Oh, I, I didn't mean for you to go pull her in. I thought you might rent me a car to get to the next town. Well, there's uh, no car here till my brother-in-law comes to relieve me in the morning. Oh. Uh, but I'll tell you what I'll do, son. Oh, what's that? If you'll just wait right here, I'll go inside and phone for somebody to, to come out and get you. You just wait right out here. Wait a minute, mister. Well? You're not going to phone for anybody to help me. You're going to phone for somebody to come get me, just like you said. Huh? You heard that radio broadcast about me, didn't you? I don't know what you're You're lying, but you're not going to trap me. Wait. Come back here. We're the special agents of the FBI. Hey, you fellas didn't come all the way from Amarillo since I phoned. No, we were already on the trail and called in and got your report. Well, he ain't missed him more than an hour, and he's on foot besides. Good. Uh, which way did he go? Well, he lit out running hard as he could down the road going west. Well, you can't afford to keep to the road long. No, he'd get lost out there on that desert. A uh, desperate man will take any kind of chance. Of course, he might stumble onto them caves off over there. Well, where's this, sir? Oh, about three miles across the flats where the hills begin. Burnett, let's see if we can pick up where he turned off into the desert. All right. If you do, you had not to have no trouble tracking him across that red sand. That's what I figure. Come on, Burnett. Wait a minute, Burnett. What's the matter? We're on the trail. There's a fork in the trail. One goes straight ahead into the tunnel, and the other turns off sharply to the left. How much listen and see if we can pick up the sound. Okay. Well, he probably stopped so we couldn't hear him. Then we'll just have to try one of these tunnels. If we take the wrong one, he'll double back and get out. We can't miss hearing him do it. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's take this one to the left first. Uh-huh. I hear him, Alan. We get the right one. Come on! <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Stay where you are, I will follow that rock. 
fool, Luke. I wanted you. Don't come after me or I'll take the chub. Luke, you heard me. Okay. What you do is up to you, Luke. We're coming in after you. Come on, Luke. Stop where you are, I'll do it. You heard me, I'll jump. I'll jump, I tell you. Keep away. I'll keep away from you. Get out. It's much easier to take somebody else's life than it is your own, isn't it? Come on, get up. <laughs> Jack Newton was returned to the state of Texas to stand trial for the murder of Robert Fillmore. He was found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment. As mentioned earlier, the average American's natural friendliness is an admirable trait and one to be preserved and encouraged. The greatness of our nation is based on friendship and without it, our rendezvous with destiny would be meaningless. But your FBI asks you to exercise caution, particularly when you feel inclined to give a lift to a hitchhiker. The files of your FBI reveal case after case proving that the safest policy with hitchhikers is to keep right on driving. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's colorful story from the files of your FBI. And now, once again, friends, let me remind you that no matter how much you earn, you have a valuable asset in Social Security, and your Equitable Society representative will gladly show you how easy it is to build your Social Security into full security. He will explain to you how Social Security and life insurance can work together for your complete protection and will help you determine exactly where you stand under Social Security. No obligation, of course. Phone him tomorrow. Your Equitable Society representative is listed in your local phone book under the name the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. <laughs> Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Careless Kidnappers. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. And now, this is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Careless Kidnappers on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.